welcome to Go Ye Into All the World. I'm Pastor Scott Ingram. I'm the pastor at Sunrise Baptist Church. I'm glad you could join me for this message today. Today, uh, I'm still going through the book of Genesis, and I've come to the point in Genesis where God creates gender. A lot of people will tell you today that, you know, God didn't create gender, that there aren't two genders, that they're fluid, that you can be a bisexual, you can be a transsexual, you can be a pansexual, uh, you can be all these different types of people groups, they would say, that you change into once you do a certain sexual act. But the fact is, there's only one act that changes you into a new people group. There's only one act before God's eyes that makes you different. It makes you into a different creature. Matter of fact, it tells you it makes you into a new creature in Christ, and that's to follow him as your Savior and Lord. Today, we're going to look at the point in history when God created male and female. And uh, if you have questions about that today, if you're concerned thinking, well, I'm not sure if I'm a male, even though I'm physically a male, or I'm not sure I'm a female, even though I'm physically a female, Folks, I pray you'll listen to this because God designed you. He made you into who you are, and you can trust in what he has, he has accomplished in you. Let, let's look and see what God's Word has to say today. Um, for the past several weeks, we have been looking at the book of Genesis. And as we have looked through the book of Genesis, it has reminded me of how far our culture has strayed from the truth and even from reality itself our culture has just went totally berserk uh, you can remember it's just been a couple of weeks ago I actually had to preach a message that taught us that we are not animals now I wouldn't have thought when I was a younger man that I would have to tell people that you're not an animal that you're a special creation of God but I had to bring a message from God's Word that He knew that we would need to remind us that we're not just animals, that we are special creations of God. And, and folks, if we could just get back to what Genesis shows us, that, that we can believe what the Bible says, I believe we'd see some great changes in our culture uh, as people begin to understand and come back to the Bible. Um, but one of the biggest changes that I've seen in our culture today uh, has been on the aspect of male and female, about what gender you are. So where I spoke a, a while back that you're not an animal, now I'm having to bring a message today showing us that we are either male or female. Who would have ever have thought just a few years ago that I would have to bring a message like that? But that's the next thing we talk about as God creates a woman as God creates genders. Now Jesus very clearly told us that you are either a male or a female. One or the other. And that's in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. If you'll turn there in your Bibles, if you'll stand in honor of the reading of God's Word, I want to share what Jesus said about the gender debate. And isn't it so telling that Jesus' words here were, Have ye not read... How many of us have not read and believed what the Word of God said about something? Have ye not read that He which made them at the beginning made them male and female? You may be seated. Now, I've seen a lot of change in the past few decades. I'm uh, 45 years old, and I've seen all sorts of different things. And, and I've seen such change in this area and this idea of gender. It is just beyond comprehension to understand. Uh, there's uh, people who say there is no such thing as gender. They say now that you can change genders. This wasn't heard of as I was growing up. And as many of you all were growing up as well. This is a quote from a law professor, Paula Edelbrick. She died very young. She's also a homosexual activist. And she said this, she said, being queer means pushing the parameters of sex, sexuality, and family. And in the process, listen to this, this is what the process, the idea that is being pushed, transforming the very fabric of society. We must keep our eyes in her agenda on the goals of providing true alternatives to marriage and of radically reordering society's view 
of reality. Reality. Folks, reality is reality, right? I mean, you can't argue what is reality. But they are saying they are going to change the view of reality. If you were out somewhere a few years ago, and somebody, you start having different views of reality, of what reality really was, what do they say you are? Crazy. You're crazy. You've went insane when you start looking at reality in a different way. But these are some of the things that I have seen. I never thought I'd see the day when I would see people telling me that they were transitioning into another gender. I never thought I'd see the day. And then I seen a, a while back, some of y'all remember Sonny and Cher. Remember them? Their, uh, their daughter, Chastity, began saying she was going to transition into a man. That she would become a man named Chaz now. And, and she was on that Dancing with the Stars show. She published a book showing uh, that she had become a man. But folks, all she did was mutilate the outside of her body. She is still a female inside. Science proves you cannot change the inner workings of a human being. That's why there are doctors who look at women and there are doctors who look at men. This is reality. You understand? It is reality. I never thought I'd see the day that I'd see a transgender model. Never in my mid I didn't even know what a transgender was till a little while back, right? I never thought I'd see the day that on a, a one of those shows, America's Next Top Model, there'd be a transgender contestant. Or I would see men selling makeup dressed as women and putting it on. I never thought I'd see the day that that would occur. I never thought I'd see the day when they were, it was an idea that they put in something called same-sex education down in California legislature where they required schools to teach uh, the contributions of LGBTQ Americans throughout history. I never thought I'd see that. I never thought that even before that, that at an elementary school in Oakland would begin teaching gender diversity to its students because the education director said this. He says, it turns out there are not just two options to gender. Outside reality outside what well, I can plainly see with my eyes outside reality. I never thought there'd come a day we're down in our Knoxville streets this past weekend. We would have a gay celebration celebrating people involved in a certain activity like this. That's what it is. It's celebrating the activity. It isn't celebrating the person. It is celebrating the activity that's going on. I never thought I'd hear of educators and students encouraging people to recognize the Transgender Day of Remembrance in November, the LGBT History Month in February, or the LGBTQ Pride Month in June. I never thought I'd see the day any of these things would occur. I never thought I'd see the day that there would be gay legalization. I never thought I'd see the day when there were laws set up to protect engaging in this activity. That's what it is. An activity. It's not who you are. It's something you do. You understand? That doesn't make you into a whole other people group by doing this activity. It doesn't make you into a whole different group with separate rights. It makes you into doing an activity. But in this gay legalization, we've seen people enforce you to accept an idea called same-sex marriage. Now, not only that, anyone who would dare to say that any of these ideas are wrong or they, cannot, they should not be done will be labeled as a bigot, someone who is uh, desperately outside of the times who doesn't want to accept reality, right? This is what you will be labeled as. This was very clearly seen just a while back when the Duck Dynasty man, uh, Phil, he stood up and he made a, uh, said some words. He said, uh, you know, the homosexual, and he was talking about murderers, and he was talking about drunkards, and he put all these together, and people put that online, and they said, oh my goodness, I can't believe he puts homosexuals with, with murderers, and he puts homosexuals with drunkards, and he puts all of them in all these different things. But the man was simply croaking a Bible verse. What did Jesus say? Have ye not read? Have ye not read? There's a lot of Christians ain't read, right? A lot of Christians have not read what the Bible says. And I have no doubt in my mind that the verse which I read in the beginning in Matthew 19, 4, 
that Jesus said, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, making it clear that there was a man and there was a woman, Jesus would be right up over the old field today getting tore down, wouldn't he? And I have no doubt I'll be tore down. I have been rejected for jobs. I have no doubt in my mind I have been rejected for jobs because I take this stance. Because I have openly said this. And you will face rejection and demeaning as well if you take this stance. But I tell you what. I'll not go against it. Alright? Why? Because I love people too much. I love the people who are involved in these things. I love them enough that I want to see them changed by the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Only He can save them. Only He can make a difference within their lives. But here's the thing. I never thought I'd see the day all those different things would occur. But folks, your kids here, they'll never see a day where it didn't occur. You hear me? Your children, your grandchildren, they'll never see a day when this was not the norm. That's why we have to be more diligent than ever to stand on what the Word of God says as the whole culture of America goes downhill into Sodom and Gomorrah. But out of love. Not out of, oh, no better than you do. No. Out of love for these people. Love, because I tell you what, the, 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 what's going to come out of all of this in the years to come, there are going to be plenty of people coming in here who have engaged in an in a evil activity, just like the evil activities you may have done, but not the same. But they're going to be entering into these churches. They're going to be seeking a way to be saved. And folks, we're going to be here preaching the truth to them. All right? They're going to be seeking this. This is going to happen because this is not part of what God put in the natural order. What has caused this change? Well, have you ever asked someone, and this is over my 45 years, have you ever went to somebody and asked them if men and women are different or how men and women are different? Does that kind of make some of you men bristle to think that you might go ask a woman that? Or maybe even put up the idea that men and women are different. Have you noticed that? In the past years, people will, will, will have this uneasy feeling to say that there could be any difference between a man and a woman. But God tells us clearly that there are differences. These are some of the answers that I've heard over the years. One, there's no difference between a man and a woman except for reproductive organs. No difference whatsoever. Oh, no. There's differences besides just the physical. A, a woman thinks differently. A man thinks differently. man has a different way about it. Even our physicality in how things inside of us, how we think, how we react, all of these things psychologically, they are huge differences. It is more than just the physical. There's also the idea that you'll get an answer. All differences between the two sexes, all that's learned. You just learned all of that. You know, somebody at one time gave you a toy truck because you were a boy, and at some time uh, uh, you were a girl, so somebody gave you a Barbie doll, so you learned what feminine was and you learned what male was. No. No, they've done many studies, and, and the kids usually go for either one. And if a boy plays with a Barbie doll, he plays with it like a boy would play with a Barbie doll. You know what I mean? I have a, a, a true confession to make right now. I had a Barbie doll. <laughs> Bill will call me out on that later, I'm sure. But I did when I was little. I played with it like a little boy did. I went up and I saved the little boy doll with G, uh, Barbie doll with G.I. Joe, you know. I mean, that, that's what I did. Because boys and girls are different. And we can't, we can't get these ideas in our mind that it's just something you learn. That's just ridiculous. That, and it, this is the, the new thing. Gender isn't even real. It's imaginary that you're male or you're female. And they say, what is even this question that there's a difference between a man and a woman? They'll say, why limit it to only two? We can have 500 different genders because it's fluid. Gender is changeable. That a man can transition to a woman. They can transition back to a man at any time. And it's all sorts of this floating around fluid thing. There is a whole place in a bookstore that I go to that is dedicated to gender studies. There is colleges where they study gender. And folks, all i got to do is look and I can tell if it's a man or a woman. Right? Pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty simple. And yet all of these things, they say all these different genders. And this is probably where I was concerned as I've been growing up and somebody would ask me the difference between a man and a woman. I was kind of like, well, is it sexist to say there is a difference? Maybe I ought to just keep quiet and not say anything. I don't want to look look 
bigoted or prejudiced about anything, you know. And that's where I was for many years. But God makes a clear difference that there is a difference between a man and a woman. And we live in a state of confusion today and our children are going to live in a state of confusion like no other. You hear me? Like no other. They will be so confused unless you actually do what this church covenant says. To sit down with them each and every evening, each and every morning, whatever it is, you sit down with them and you explain the Word of God to them. The Word of God. And only you can do it. I can come here and we can come here, Pastor Scott, he's going to talk about Junior Day. You sit down with them each and every day and show them what the Word of God says. They need to know. They need to know because I promise you, you know what the death rate is for those involved in homosexuality? They die at increasingly younger rates all the time. It, it, it's a horrible life to live. It will end up in death and destruction, but they never show you that, do they? They don't show you the misery that they'll go through, the, the torment that they go through, all because we want to live in this new reality that is being created. So today, let's cut out the confusion. Let's cut it out. Let's look up. Let's go back in. Uh, I used to like when I was a kid to watch that little time machine show where the little dog would jump into the, the time machine and then go back in the way back machine. Let's go way back to Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2 in your Bibles if you'll turn there for just a second. Genesis chapter 2, and this is on the sixth day of creation. And you could say this is when God created gender. When God created gender. You know, if He creates something, He has a right to say what it is, doesn't He? Doesn't He? If you create something, if you make a beautiful painting and, and put it up, are you able to label and, and give that painting a name? Yes. So when God created gender, He can tell us what it is, right? So in Genesis 2 here, in verse 18, God sees a problem with poor old Adam. In verse 18, He says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So what is the problem here that we see that he has? The first problem is here that he needs a relationship. Man needs a mate. But he needs something more than just a mate. I think that's where we get stuck at. We think it's all about mating and it's much more than that, right? He needs more than just a mate. He needs a help me. What is a help me? He needs somebody to come along and help him bear the burden. Let me tell you, folks, if it wasn't for this lady right now, right here, I don't know what I'd do. I don't. She helps me bear the burden in my life. She helps me get through things. She is my help me. And if you are blessed to have a wife, the Bible says it's a blessing to have one, then you should be happy about it. You should be excited about it that you have someone that God has allowed to come beside you and be a helpmate to you to help you get through the different things that go on in life. And uh, so the idea here, God sees that there is a problem in His perfect creation. And He goes on here in verses 19 through 20, and He begins to show man the problem. That's kind of the deal with us guys, right? We'll be walking along. We don't see the problem unless somebody kind of points it out to us. Shows us what's going on. Maybe that's the reason he needed to help me. He needed a woman to show him what was the problems he needed to deal with. But anyway, he goes here and he says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And what so Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave name to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. He could not find out of any of the animals that there was any kind of a help me for him. But the thing here is, Adam can't find his opposite. You ever notice how a lot of people, the opposites will attract when it comes to a relationship? It's like they're filling in whatever uh, is missing inside themselves. They'll find the opposite in that other human being and it'll fill that in. And that's kind of what we're seeing here in Adam. He can't find anybody who is his opposite. I mean, can you imagine? He brings the giraffe out. She ain't too cute. No. Uh, he brings the, brings the gorilla out. Uh, no. Uh, right? I mean, it just, this is kind of a comical thing to see going on as he brings each one of these creatures to him and he's naming them and looking at them. So, God sees that there is these two, this, this two separates to all the different animals. And he looks here at Adam. Adam doesn't have the help meet for him. 
And God says, I'm going to make two from one. Remember when he created Adam, he created him in a special way. He wasn't like the animals. He went down, he got personal, he got close, he breathed the breath of life into him, and man became a living soul. The Bible tells us that he was made in the literal image of God. The literal image of God. So look here at verse 21. Uh, it says, And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. This would be your... I, I have heard in the past that people actually got the idea of anesthesia from this verse. That God put him in a deep sleep before he performs this type of surgery. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now when we went over the creation account, we looked at it and we seen how God continually separated, didn't He? He separated the light and the dark. He separated the day and the night. He separated the sky and the earth. He separated the water and the land. And now He takes the one man created His image and He separates him out. He separates the one made in His image to male and to female, yet they are both one in God's image. The actual word sex in Latin, it actually comes from a Latin word meaning to divide or separate, showing that humanity was separated into two groups, both male and and female. And now we have the idea that when you put down sex, you've got male, female, and other. There ain't no other. There isn't any other. There is only male or female. So he, he separates these two out. And, and God makes these two people from one who are now very different. A man has male qualities. And a female has feminine qualities generally. But you know they're not all the same. A woman will have qualities that, that seem male, that might seem male, like a strength. Sometimes you'll see strength in, in a lady, even a great leader of, of a lady who has strength, but it's in her feminine way. And you'll see the same thing in a man. You'll see nurturing from a man who might be able to nurture and, and really show that, that female quality of nurturing, but it'll be in a male way. There is a difference between the two. Even uh, the LGBTQ acknowledges this. Whenever you go out, and I've seen many people who have been involved in this lifestyle, one will be involved and be the male. One will be involved and be the female. They'll take on God's natural order even though they are denying God's natural order. You see, and that's the idea of separating ourselves from reality. But the beauty of this is, God takes two people who are a lot different and has them have a relationship together. It's almost kind of comical, right? Folks, that's marriage, right? There is a friction that goes on between the two together, and yet they learn how to work together and be one as they were here. One, together, working together. And God uses that picture of taking two people who are so different than one another coming together but are made for one another, coming together to give us an idea of His relationship with us. God has us go to someone who is so totally different because we've got to have a relationship with Him who is so totally different. It's beyond our minds even to think what it would be like to have a relationship with someone who's a spirit, right? But we do. We do. And He uses this image of a man and a woman coming together all throughout the Scriptures. All throughout the Bible, this is shown. God uses the picture of a husband and a wife as the analogy of our relationship with Him all throughout the Bible. Marriage is a picture of our connection with God. In the Old Testament, Israel is actually shown as an unfaithful bride and God is the jealous husband. In the New Testament, Jesus is the bridegroom, is the groom, and the church is His bride. In Revelation, Jesus and His people come together at the end in what? A great big wedding feast. So you see the idea, the very idea that you can take a, a, a man and a man or a woman and a woman is an absolute spitting in the face of God for how He has shown all of creation all throughout the Bible to come together. Folks, it's very clear that have you not read has not been read when you don't follow what the Word of God said, right? When you go against everything it's saying throughout the whole text, it's very clear. 
God tells us to rejoice in the differences between a man and a woman. Look at verses 23 and 25 here. He says, and Adam said, and this is Adam when he first sees Eve. He says, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall, they be, shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. When Adam sees his bride, he's like, yeah, she's mine. I like this. This is good. And he's excited. And that verse there, verse 24, you'll see that same verse repeated all throughout the Bible. Paul will repeat it. Jesus will repeat it. What is he repeating? Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Why would they repeat that over and over again throughout the Bible? This is the whole basis for society. And now we are tearing down society for something beyond reality. You see what I'm saying? All of society is based on this. All of society. And it takes a man and a woman coming together to do that. So we should rejoice in the differences that we come together. First of all, we have physical differences. Not only on the outside, but on the inside. Um, science shows that everything's from brains to ret retinas to jaw bones to blood cells are affected by little chromosomes that determine if you're male or female. 1 Peter 3, 7 says this, and I'm sure this is another verse that they might get old Phil on or Jesus on. It says, Ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, talking about the wife, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life. And the idea here when he speaks about the weak, weaker vessel, he's talking about the woman generally being a weaker human than a male is because a male is bigger and stronger. That's a generality. I mean, there's some women probably could get me down and whip me, no doubt about it. But, but... I'll just say this, there is a general difference in a man and a woman that the woman will be softer. She'll, she'll be of the weaker vessel. And this is why we see the chaos right now with a girls' all-state track team in America. Have you seen the, the news? In the girls' all-state track team, there has been this big controversy because for the last two years, it ain't been a girl that's won it. It's been a boy. It's been a boy who's won it who says he's a girl. And in the present climate that we are living in, we have to go along that he is a girl, according to them, right? So they have that problem. How, how can we let everything be equal when there are these obvious physical differences? Obvious physical differences. Not only that, that there are differences between men and women uh, mentally in the psychological realm. Uh, remember, these are all generalities, but listen to what Ephesians 5.33 says. It says, let everyone in you particular so love his wife even as himself. That's what a man is commanded to do, is to love his wife as himself. And it even gives the picture that he is supposed to die for her as Christ would die for her. And then he says in that same verse, and the wife see that she reverence her husband, meaning to respect him. Now, now this shows the differences in the psychology of a man and a woman. A man wants respect. Sometimes he wants respect more than he wants love. Did you know that? And a woman doesn't quite understand that. In the same aspect, a woman desperately wants love. That's what psychologists have told us all this time as they've been studying over these things. And God's Word obviously already told us that, that. That a woman wants to feel love. And she wants that. And a man has a problem sometimes with showing love. Can I get an amen from the women with that? Yeah? A man sometimes has a hard time showing his love to his wife because... He just doesn't connect on that level sometimes, right? Sometimes he does. Amen for that too. Uh, sometimes he does. But there is this difference in how the one wants to react to the other one. And Paul makes that clear there in Ephesians that there is this difference. So there is all these differences. Have you ever watched ice skating? But ice skating between a man and a woman when they dance out there and they're dancing around on the skates. Now they are performing the very same actions. They are skating. And yet, as they are performing those exact same moves, they both have two very different roles to play. The man in the role, he is to come along and be the strong one and pick her up and carry her. Now can you imagine for a moment that this big bulky man on the skates comes around to that woman and throws himself out like, uh, like in the movies and, and she is to catch him. What's going to happen? Ah! 
right? She's going to die, right? It's not going to work. It's not going to work because he is different than her. There is a clear difference there. But if the man was to go dancing around on the ice hall elegantly like that, it just wouldn't look quite the same. He has a manly role of elegance that he is out there as he goes along in that, that idea. The woman shows her grace and her beauty. And in the male partner, we see solidity and strength. And folks, even as these things are going on in our culture, they will never catch. It's kind of like the idea of abortion. Abortion was legalized. What, 45 years ago? About as old as I am? And there's still a battle over it. There's still a battle over it today. And there will still be a battle over this because it goes outside the natural order of God. If you're here today and you have had struggles, am I a man? Am I a woman? I clearly tell you from the Word of God, you are either a man or a woman and your physical appearance will tell that to you very clearly. You are a man or a woman. Because you committed a certain act that was outside of what a man would do does not make you into another race of people. It does not make you into another kind of, of people group. You just did an act that was against God. And you know what? God has an answer for taking care of the things that we do against God. It's called grace. And He offers grace to each and every one, even those that have been involved in this activity. He offers grace to each and every one. I pray that you have taken God up on that offer of grace that He offers to all mankind, to all who will receive Him through faith, trusting that His Son came, He paid the price on the cross for our sins. If you've done that, praise God. If you haven't done that, I so pray that you will do that today. And I would love for you to come visit us at sunrise and look learn how you can become a new creature in Christ. Sunrise is located directly off exit 23 off of Interstate 81 in Tennessee. We would love for your family to meet our family. And again, thank you for watching and sharing with others.